right guys, I'm Stephen Paul and this is my new bait from Livingston Lures, the Kraken. It took me a lot of years to perfect this thing and it's going to put big muskies in your net. Only three people have had Krakens during the developmental process that have spent time on the water with them. Myself, Steve Herbeck and my good friend Tim. All three of us have caught world class fish on this bait just by utilizing it in a few different ways. Now there's no wrong way to fish a jerk bait for muskies, but if you're serious about catching more and bigger fish, using the Kraken to its fullest extent is gonna help you on the water. So you may have seen this already, may have not. The Kraken is hybrid bait. It is a hard body with a soft tail, right? This tail is replaceable. This is a war horse that's caught a bunch of fish and is banged up and dirty but you can replace this tail. Now from the factory, there's gonna be a couple drops of super glue on either side. I like to reinforce that out a little bit. The Kraken features an adjustable weighting system, so you can change the weights on the bottom of this bait for different applications. Obviously, you can mod the hooks out. I've got a bigger hook here. These are some stock hooks. You can do pretty much whatever you want with this bait as far as augmenting it, and it's gonna run the way you wanna do it how to target fish on your specific bodies of water is gonna be up to you, but it's easy to modify. Again, you can put BBs in this chamber. Now, one thing with the Kraken, it does intentionally take on water. This bait is hollow in a couple key places to ensure that water is getting inside of this bait, which is gonna allow it to have the best action possible. So if you have water coming out of your bait, it's not defect or damage. It simply is intrinsic of the Titan that it's gonna take on water with each cast and it's gonna help you get that hot action we're looking for out of a jerk bait. It's important to have the right setup. I fished the Dial Alexa TW on a nine foot six heavy action shield rod, 80 pound braid, 130 pound fluoro leader with a swivel, okay? Now that setup is gonna allow for this bait to have the best action possible. It's gonna free swing. It's gonna allow this bait to glide kick off to the side that flexible leader material. I don't think the Kraken's gonna be that great with a straight wire leader. You can try it, it might work for you, but a flexible leader material is gonna give you the best action. That's gonna be the starting point. Every time you buy a bait, there's, there's this thought of hope. I'm gonna catch a monster, right? We all do it, I've done it for years. I go and buy a musky bait and I go, I see what this thing can do. I have a vision of catching a monstrous fish with it and not often does that pan out. The Kraken has the ability to change the game for you if you apply it appropriately. Mus musky baits don't come with instructional manuals, but we're about to get one for the Kraken here. So, with any bait, the where, when, why, how we do it is going to make the difference between whether you catch fish or not. So, the Kraken with the, the adjustable weights is going to be versatile enough for throughout the year. So from the spring all the way to ice up or, or throughout the winter for Southern Anguish, you're gonna be able to get some action out of this bait and you're gonna be able to get some hookups. Early in the year when we're targeting shallow fish, take this weight out, throw shallow cover, throw shallow structure. You're gonna get looks on this bait. I wanna show you a few different ways that I fish this bait to get the most out of it and talk about where we're targeting muskies. So, not often do I break out a jerk bait like the Kraken if I'm having a hot topwater bite or, or you know a blade bite. We're looking for fish that are slightly more finicky or big fish that have already been caught or are too smart to fall for bucktails, topwater, and classic presentations. Primarily, structurally, where I'm gonna utilize the Kraken the most is going to be shallow feeding zones, deep weed edges, and harsh breaks, right? So this bait is able to contour from shallow, say shallow weeds, to the deeper weed edge or from the shallow tops of a reef to the deeper edges of a reef humps things of that nature so you're going to get a lot of use out of that if your boat's positioned in deeper water this would not be my first consideration by fishing something that's insanely even it's four feet deep utilize this when fishing near deep water and the fun thing with deep water places places that structurally have deep water adjacent to shallow food shelves that's usually where we're going to find big muskies so from the bare bone basics right You've never fished jerk baits. Throw this bait out, turn the handle, stop. Turn the handle, stop. This is gonna allow for this bait to do a very standard kind of tube jerk bait up and down action. You can see it in the water going up and down, right? If you've never fished a jerk bait of this style, that's gonna be a great way to start. That's gonna allow that bait, I don't know if you can see it in the camera there, it's gonna surge forward. And the faster you do these, these intermittent stops, real stops, that bait's gonna be a little quicker. 
What I like to do with this bait is, is do some very erratic jerk bait fishing with it. So the way I like to use the Kraken in most applications, I'll throw it out, I'm gonna pop the rod up, and I'm not doing it tremendously hard, but I'm watching for the slack to go out of that line, which tells me that bait is now in free fall or in glide position, if you will. The Kraken doesn't fall perfectly vertically. It glides forward and hangs, okay? What's so important with this retrieve is that we allow for that hang time. You've heard it about a million other baits over the years. Hang time, hang time, hang time. You gotta allow for that glide hang time on this bait. It's gonna come up, it's pop, and it's gonna glide down slightly forward. And the next time you pop it, it's gonna hop up and repeat that process. As we're doing that, that hang time is gonna be critical to getting strikes, okay? There's a moment of pause, the bait comes up, it hangs, then glides down, allow it to do that. Now, there's been certain scenarios with this bait where a quick retrieve has worked. I'm popping it up and it is just really erratic and it's going all over the place. You can work it fast. You can work at that traditional up and down jigging motion. If you wanna tangle with beasts, and I'm talking big serious fish, allow that hang time, allow it to flutter, allow it to hang there and just do its thing and glide down. Now, so we've gone from straight reeling to just the typical upward motion line for the hang time. If you wanna get serious with this thing, you can do some really odd ripping and side motions, right? So the bait will kick off left to right, but I'll start with some of these sides and I'll drop my rod to the crack and, and rip, and then go back to an upward pop. Then sort of bow your rod to it, maybe rip right, and then come back and can rip left. So it's not going to really rise or fall, it's going to surge that allows that bait to do something that you really can't do with too many other plastics or things of that nature where we can have that up and down motion that sideward rip and it'll kick out very hard to that maybe rejoin that with another upward rip we can get some really funky action if i'm getting follows which is rare with this bait most of the time you're going to get to eat with it if i'm getting follows on the kraken i might stick with it and come back and then add those weird erratic side to side hard rips downward rips down pops, right? And that's gonna send that bait surging more forward, right? So that bait is just gonna skid directly forward instead of doing the hop on the straight rip. So if we're sort of integrating those bulldog medusa rips into that guy, right? So you could work this bait as a straight jerk bait in that fashion as well, but integrate that in your tree. So up, let it fall, up, let it fall, up, let it fall, downward, rip forward, surge. Give it a left, right, give it a pop, that becomes highly erratic. So when we're dealing with fish that are on the cusp, right? They're negative and neutral, you can't get them to go. You can mix it up so much with this bait, it's gonna allow you to trigger strikes that nobody else is getting on the lake. One thing I will say is this, um, in, in discussing with Steve Herbeck and other people that have actually spent some time on the water with this guy, very good hookup ratio. This style of bait, most of the time they're gonna get headshot, right? If traditional tubes and these other baits, most of the time the muskie's gonna come in and hit them in the head. Rarely have I had a tail grab with this bait. He's confronted with two big trebles and this hard plastic body that allows you to just slide it. You know, when you get into soft plastics, at times we're contending with pulling that plastic, ripping the plastic through a muskie's teeth before we get hook penetration. Not a problem with the cracking at all. It's phenomenal in that aspect. So one thing we've not really demoed at all is gonna be the shallow applications of this bait. If you're fishing a Kraken or a Titan, you know, keep your little tool around. It's just my Shimano reel tool. We'll pop this guy open. It's just a Phillips head screw. Now, if you take this guy out, keep him somewhere handy dandy, we wanna make sure that we don't lose this. All right, so again, I don't have a Phillips head, but this will do. And one thing I want to tell you guys is make sure when you're putting these in, these baits, if you're taking weights in and out, crank them tight, but don't over crank. Don't like, it doesn't have to be ah, as insanely tight as it is. These are, these are, uh, uh, malt, you know, these, this is a small threaded bait, or excuse me, screw in here, and it's going to hold fine. You don't have to muscle it in. Just get it nice and snug. So this is the Kraken with no weight in it. It is very buoyant. That is a very buoyant bait, right? As you see, it's a very slow fall. So, 
what I can do with this is some neat applications. Obviously, early in the season, I can throw this guy out here and some nice downward pops and let that thing fall. Boom. Surging forward. He just went right. He just went straight. Pop him up. And now we have a shallow water, finesse kind of glidey jerk bait where you can work this over just the shallowest stuff and he's going to skitter out left. He'll skitter maybe right. Upward pops and that bait is going to be awesome for contouring shallow cover and structure early in the season. It has just a really nice slow fall with no weight, right? And it's, it's not the slowest. It's not like an insanely, uh, but it will slow that whole process down. You're going to get the water in that bait. You're going to be able to fish this thing in really neat ways where he is just really finessey. And it's great for that shallow stuff. Now, I had a lot of action taking the weight out of these crackers and throwing it on top of reefs at sunset in Canada, right? That classic shallow bulldog or shallow rubber presentation in the evenings worked over these reefs for quite a few years. This is a neat presentation. You have something that's a couple feet of water on top is all. You need to work it shallow. Pop the weight out there. Again, with this, you can work it with no weight in that similar upward manner. And it's gonna have a great action. It's gonna jig, sort of the jig up and down. As well, we can do those downward rips or we can do straight reel retrieves and let him just sort of do his magic. The shallower I'm working, the more apt I am to go to the reel, okay? So I don't want to blow that bait out of the water. It's, if we're working this in two feet of water over shallow cover structure, throw that out there. I might be better just point my rod at that bait and just do little zippy kind of glide bait. You know, if you're working like say a shum shum or some of these left to right glide baits, you can get that same kind of cadence without worrying about pulling too hard or blowing it up and just contour right on top of that reef or contour right on top of that weed line or whatever it might be and get a really good action out of that bait. Uh, that versatility, like I said, it's not necessarily early season versus late season. If you're on a bite where you're getting bites on this style of bait, a lot of times that's a midday bite. These fish will transition. They'll want that same presentation, but they'll want it in a shallower zone. So this allows you to pull a screw out of this guy, thumb tighten him up, transition to that evening bite, and you're in the money, right? You're gonna be in front of muskies. Again, I don't even have a fill up to this because it's real till. Just snug, okay? Just kind of snug. Now, if you want to do something goofy with this bait, I'll show you it's something I figured out. Didn't think it was going to happen in the design process, but something I've been playing with and it just kind of happened this way. Is this weight, as you'll see, I snugged her up pretty good. This weight is contoured to be flush with the belly of this bait, right? If you kick that weight out, let's take her out and just start from scratch. Let's say we're going to put it in and do something weird. If you turn that weight sideways, where it's no longer flush with the bait. That can make for some rather interesting action out of this, okay? It's not the intended design, but it's a cool kind of bonus thing that I discovered fishing this. It's not something I envisioned from day one in the design process, but it has been pretty interesting. I'm taking this weight, setting them sideways. Now this thing is kind of cockeyed in there, right? So I've turned it completely to the side. And that action, is, it can just be really, especially when we're looking for like weird falls or a quicker fall off, it tends to skip a little bit more left to right, just a hair. And it has been interesting just to see that bait, how it sort of changes the action and getting a little funkier of a walk out of it. If I need something hyper, aggressive it, it, it just was not designed that way but it tends to fall just a little faster with the weight off center there and that's a neat little trick if i need to go a little bit deeper i'll just you know loosen the screw tension turn this thing sideways it tends to get a little more wide open a little funkier in that regard one thing you're always going to have when you're fishing jerk baits and if you're fishing the kraken appropriately utilizing a little bit of slack line and you got to get used to that touch and feel okay 
when should I re-engage the bait? Let the bait take the slack out before you try to try to uh, rip it up again, like we've said. That's gonna open up Pandora's box a little bit on strikes. So if you've never been comfortable with having this slight modicum of slack in your line, you're gonna have to watch out for strikes. One thing you want to do with this, especially if we're working a deep edge and we're really letting it hang, be paying attention to your line on the water, okay? Herbeck and I both do the same thing. If I'm really gonna let it fall down, I'll feel that line. I'll have a hand on that line. If I feel something tick or something weird, I'm loading up on that fish. So we want to get accustomed or be prepared for that slack line rushing out of this bait as we're working it back to the boat. We want to make sure that we're prepared for a fish to hit it on the fall. I can't say, I'm going to pull it out a little bit deeper here. I can't say that I've had a fish take it on the rip yet. I may have, but don't hold me to it. I believe all my strikes on the Kraken have all been on the fall, on the hang time. So it's something to be aware of. So what we're going to do, get out deeper here as we're working this bait. Pull him up, let him fall. And it's falling at a pretty quick rate here, so it doesn't take long for that slack to pick up. I'll see it, pick up with my line, little pop, right? You know, I add in my downward rip, side rip, mix it up. And on that hang time, I'm looking for that line to surge out way faster than it should. You'll feel it. You'll feel it in your reel if you're holding the line. Be prepared for strikes on the fall. So that means with the Kraken, a quick reel is going to be recommended. So let's say we're out here. And I'm doing this, and I see that line zip out. What I want you to do, reel down, and then you're going to set up. Okay? If you see that slide head out way faster than the bait should fall, reel down into that fish and boom. Uh, Jay, who's working the camera, he was one of the first people to catch a fish on a crack and on a prototype. And it was that scenario as well. Reel down, you go, whoa, there's something there the next time. Yep. I'm always waiting with this bait for a fish to be on the end as well when I go for that next upward rip. Okay? So at times you'll throw this guy out. We'll have it and we'll be working it. And he pulled down and he go, that feels different. A lot of fish, because it's hang time, will zoom in, boom, and just grab onto it and sit there. So you may reel down and go, well, that feels different. That's when you're going to need to load up on the rod. So make sure you're prepared for odd strikes and hang time strikes, slack line strikes. You're going to have to be prepared for that. It's going to happen with this bait. Now, jerk baits like the Kraken or hybrid baits, whatever you want to call it, you have to think about your figure eights. We're not reeling. The classic, I tell people all the time, you know, with a bucktail, we want to reel up all the way to the leader of our burning the blades. You know, it comes in, we do this number. With the Kraken, if I'm fishing for deep fish, I want to keep some line out. So, you know, a high bright sunny day like today, I assume that muskies are not going to really be apt to come above the level of light penetration. So, if I'm working this bait in the last, you know, third of the cast, I'm going, okay, I need to be prepared for my figure eight. So, when I get this bait boat side, I might leave four or five feet of line here and then continue that jerking action, typically in a big oval, right? These baits, you can, you tend to, if you try to cross over jerk baits with extra line out in, a, in the crossover of an eight, you might grab yourself or you're, you're trying to fling him around. What I want you to do when you're fishing the crack, bring it in, we're in the, that last third of the cast, come in here, boom, right? And we'll leave that little bit of line out here and I'm gonna keep that jerking, falling motion going. You know, I can speed it up in the corners, bring him up, let him fall, bring him up, let him fall. Great thing with this bait, that sink rate. If you have a muskie that's come up behind this bait and he doesn't wanna eat it and he's being persnickety, you can get in this corner, come in, be thinking about it. Okay, we're on our second or third time where he won't eat. Boom, free spool. Thumb on the spool, dead stick that lure. Pop, pop, and just hold on for dear life. A lot of time that's gonna work if you get a fish that is just reluctant to hit in the eight with a jerk bait, don't be afraid to dead stick it. Just let it fall, get it close to the bottom or off the bottom. That fish is gonna go down like a submarine and come up with it. Jig that bait. If that's not working, go back to your eight re-engage mix it up with dead sticking with the crack and boat side that's gonna really elevate your your figure eight game if you're figure eighting these baits in that manner
All right, guys, hopefully those tips on the crack and will help get you lined up on a big muskie and put monsters in your net like it's done for me and her back and Tim and the other guys have had the opportunity to fish this bait. Don't be afraid to experiment with this bait. This is a modifying platform. Uh, it's the way I like to fish. I like to tweak baits throughout the course of the day or course of a week. Play with this, experiment with this bait, make it yours, make it something unique. You're gonna catch more fish with it. Be sure that we're fishing the right locations with this bait. Like I said, deep edges, deep weed edges, points, humps, anything that is a deep structural element or a deep cover element like deep weeds, this is one that's gonna excel. You're gonna catch fish on this thing. Make sure you're working it slow enough. The fall, the rate of fall, the action on this is pretty quick, but it's gonna have that forward glide. Allow time for this thing to hang, get comfortable with it, and you're gonna put monster muskies in your net.